Music from the Suicide Commandos, a track called Complicated Fun. That's from Big Hits of Mid-America, Volume 3. Wax Idols right before that from Discipline and Desire. Sound of a Void was the track. And Courtney Barnett starting off the set, Pedestrian at Best. That is from uh, KXP listeners' favorite album of last year, Sometimes I Sit and Think. Sometimes I just sit. Kevin Cole with you here on the afternoon show. It's KEXP, and I am here with one of uh, KEXP favorite artists of all time, Bob Malt. Hey, Kevin. How you doing? Doing good. Welcome uh, to KEXP's new home, playing tonight at the uh, Showbox. And, yes. Uh, here right now. Also, I should mention for, uh, for folks listening, you can watch this. We're doing live video streaming. Just head on over to KEXP.org. Want to take it away? All right. We ready? Let's do it. It's your birthday Calling out for self-worth Proud you were short Or proud you want a girl We got married in the hall Where our favorite bands would work
Live on the afternoon show, Bob and uh, fantastic band, Jason Narducci on bass and uh, vocals and John Worcester on, on drums. It's great to have you guys here. Thank you so much for being here. Good to be back. And uh, thank, yeah, just heard two back, songs. Back because I was here a couple of weeks ago for the grand opening. You were. You played grand opening. That was yep. fantastic. That was great. Um, thank you for doing that. And thanks to all of you for your longtime support of KEXP and helping build the new home. Oh, my gosh. You're too kind. So uh, at Grand Opening, I mentioned loving the new album in passing. We're just up there on stage for a sec. And how scorching it is, yet how hooky it is. And uh, you comment, commented something to the effect of hiding all the darkness behind the sunshine. Oh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, yeah, I mean, uh, the new album, Past the Sky, is... Um, you know, some people have been describing these last three records as a trilogy now that the third album has appeared. And, um, you know, to me, I wrote these records in very different circumstances. So, you know, I think for the casual listener, they hear the tone and the feel of the records and maybe they think, oh, there's three that are sort of the same. But, uh, yeah, this record, you know, a lot, of, uh, a, lot of, a lot of darker stories to tell, sort of down stories for the most part. But uh, That's saying a lot. Oh, yeah. You, is, you've I had guess. some dark stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I think the good news on it is the melodies are very, very uplifting on this one. And uh, it's it's weird. It's it's such a catchy record, but, you know, those I'm not sure you want to circulate those stories constantly in your yeah. head. So Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, that's been a technique that artists have used for years, right? You think of songs like The Beatles' Help just being a literal cry for help, yet, you know, we just mm -hmm. all sing it and... Yeah. Are, are very yeah, happy definitely. Doing so. It's always the contrast is good, and sometimes you know sometimes the contrast is turned up a little higher, and I think that's the, I think that's the case with this record. You mentioned kind of being a little nervous about it too. Yep. Uh, what, what did you mean by that? Well, you know, again, I, again, with it with it being such a down record, you know, traditionally when I've written records that are very down in lyrics, um, you know, I think for the for the real devoted fans they love it, but I think for the casual fan or you know, people that are just coming to the work for the first time, they're like, well, what's this guy all on about with this, with all this no sunshine kind of thing? So, you know, this one being a little bit darker, I was like, eh, you know, I saw, you know, I spent six months by myself writing the record. Yeah. And I think sometimes when we, you know, I think when any artist isolates a little bit and you put yourself in a sort of a real personal space, you're never quite sure how it's going to play out in the out in the field. W so. Was that different for you in terms of how you wrote these songs, or was it just kind of the emotional content that was maybe different or darker? Uh, emotional content was different, as dark if not darker than most stuff. But, uh, you know, I think the difference is, you know, with Silver Age, a lot of that record was written in a very compact period. You know, most of it was written December, January of 2011, 2012. Beauty and Ruin, the second of these three records that we made together, was uh, a lot of that was written on the run, I guess. You know, we were touring so hard through 12 and 13. You know, I'd, I'd get home and barely have time to get my thoughts together and, and write some music and hopefully have some words that worked. And this record, again, six months of nothing but writing music and words. You know, it's very, very different, mm -hmm. you know, very, very different circumstances. So I think the, the, you know, as I was saying before, I think the results are, to me, are very different. Yeah. I was going to ask, uh, kind of bring up the trilogy idea, um, at least in part because uh, I'm, I'm biased. I'm a fan of all your work, but, uh, you. but I've seen critics and uh, some folks call the last three records kind of a career resurgence. Mm -hmm. I think CBS or... Yeah. Or uh, news or you know, in some major media outlet did that, did a, a really yeah. good uh, interview with you and was just uh, wondering if if you felt that way. Um, well, I mean, I just I, I go about my work year in, year out. And I think there are always tr prevailing trends yeah. in music. Sometimes loud guitars are in, sometimes they're out. Sometimes I tour a lot harder and do a lot more of the, the work that, People think that, you know, people, you know, being visible and that will have a lot to do with it. Um, you know, I think this time, 
you know, putting out the autobiography in 2011 and sort of, uh, you know, opening up a little bit to people about my personal life and about my family and, you know, historical things that I didn't really talk about much until then. It sort of lifted a weight off of me. Yeah. And uh, there was certainly a lot of visibility too, right around that period of time. I know there was that show that I uh, the Disney Hall tribute show. Yeah, and yeah. maybe the Sugar Reissues. Yeah, Sugar Reissues work with the Foo Fighters. Um, yeah, so I think you know the, the you know I think a, a, there was a little bit brighter light on me at the time, and uh, so I guess that's where the beginning you know that that would maybe help con- you know be a contributing factor to this resurgence that people are talking about, but, you know, tr- trust me, I do my work every yeah. day, so it's, you know, I, I don't get to choose when it's popular and when it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and certainly, uh, congratulations, too, it's, oh, it's been you. received really well, and, you know, for what it's worth nowadays, like a number one album. Yeah, number uh, one vinyl album in the cool. U.S. for one week, that's like a real <laughs> milestone for me, being a, being a vinyl fan, you know, growing up on you know, jukebox seven inches when I was a kid and, you know, my two albums a year I could buy at the drugstore. And so, yeah, so, I mean, that meant a lot. I mean, in this day and age, I think the fact that people are coming back to vinyl and that people supported the record so strongly right out of the gate, you know, it was definitely a milestone for me. What was that uh, first album you bought at the uh, drugstore? That would have been, uh, that would have been Revolver probably. Wow. Back in, uh, back in 66. (laughs) Good one. Um, So, um, on these last three records, you've had this incredible band, too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've been, you know, Jason and I have been, God, we've been yeah. working, we've been friends and worked together for 25 plus years now. Yeah, Jason uh, played in Sugar also, but, or toured with Sugar. You didn't? No. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> maybe played Sugar songs. Yeah, we, yeah, <laughs> when we did the Copper Blue stuff, we were all playing together, but, um, but, um, uh, you know, I've known Jason, you know, and his work since, you know, Jason and Allison and Verbo and all the projects he's been in now split single, you know, the projects that, that Jason's been involved in, in, in Chicago, in Evanston. And, um, yeah, so we've worked together a lot. And then and John came on board in 09, 08, 08, uh, in the middle of a tour, uh, we had a drummer that, had some other obligations, you know, some other some other concerts and things that he had to attend to, and uh, <laughs> Jason had uh, had suggested that we give John a call um, on very short notice. You were coming off what an AC Newman tour or what? Mountain, Goats. Mountain Goats tour. John yep. does Mountain Goats, Super Chunk, AC Newman, many many Sharpling and Worcester, many things, and uh, luckily John was pretty familiar with most of the songs that were in the set at the time. So we just got right did a in. sound did a sound check together in San Diego and he's been here ever since. Well, so. it sounds fantastic. Yeah, Absolutely thank you. great. It's, uh, it's really a pleasure to play with these guys. It's it's quite a it is it is uh, I've been tr- telling people this is the be- the best band that I've ever been in and you know some people find that very blasphemous because they have an attachment to the 80s but Yeah. Trust me, it's the best band. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, playing tonight at Showbox at the Market, tomorrow night at the Wonder Ballroom in Portland, doing a little West Coast thing here. Mm-hmm. So I, I need to ask, our Minnesota roots run deep, and, uh, you know, we both spent a lot of time in the Twin Cities. You started Husker Du there in 79 uh, mm-hmm. while going to McAllister. That's about the, uh, the time uh, I started working at First Avenue, which mm-hmm. was Uncle Sam's, and yeah. spent 14 years there. Uh, <laughs> Gosh. We we, we kind of grew up there. Yes, we did. It's certainly like family mm-hmm. from that Absolutely. era. And uh, First Ave, just a remarkable place during that time that a lot of bands like, uh, you know, Who's Do, The Replacements, and Prince got their, uh, you know, starts. Uh, and, man, you you guys played First Avenue the day after Prince passed away. Yeah. Um, we started the tour on uh, April 20th. It was a Wednesday in Madison. Played a show there and then uh, had an off day to drive up to Minneapolis and relax before the weekend shows. And we were about an hour uh, an hour outside of Minneapolis on I-94. And uh, John was John was the first one to pick up cell service. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> uh, it's a little spotty in, in Northwest Wisconsin. But uh, John <laughs> said uh, Prince died. So like what? 
you know, and then we got within range and we put on, you know, one of the local radio stations and uh, they were confirming this. You know, they had some people, you know, on site confirming what had happened. It was pretty, uh, pretty shocking. And, you know, we're driving into town, we're staying a block and a half from the club. And, you know, in my mind, I'm already, you know, sort of imagining what kind of, you know, sadness yeah. and chaos and celebrations await us and yeah how to respond to something like that that's uh, such a shocker uh, well it's just unbelievable yeah you know the whole thing was unbelievable and uh you know immediately you know my phone was on fire you know with with media people and stuff so i just you know got to my room and sort of spent a minute and you know just wrote some words you know, just a, a reminiscence of what Minneapolis was like. And, you know, my my fleeting, you know, encounters with Prince, which were very few and far between. And, you know, just tried to frame what it, what his music meant to everybody in the Twin Cities. And, you know, and then Friday and Saturday, of course, the, the two shows at First Ave. And for people who didn't know, that was where Purple Rain was filmed. And that's, that's where right. you, you DJ'd all the time. And, that's where I got drunk all the time. And, <laughs> yeah, that's where all of us lived, like you said. And it, uh, you know, to go back to that room, it was, um, it was great. You know, I, uh, a lot of people were asking, are you nervous? Are you this? Are you that? I'm like, well, no. I mean, this is my home. You yeah. know, I grew up on this stage. Of course, this is a very somber occasion, but music, music is what heals us, right? Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I was out of the country, had a similar experience. My phone was just blowing up and couldn't believe it. Uh, and just wanted, one, to be back here at KXP and be on the air in a moment like that. And then, uh, two, right after that, just wanted to go to Minneapolis ASAP and just be at First Ave for some reason, you know, just being in a community uh, with, you know, fellow music lovers and, uh, you know, fans of Prince. Uh, would have been a very profound experience. And the impact that he had on the Twin Cities was, you know, just uh, incredibly profound. Yeah. What was it like just being out, being in Minneapolis those days, uh, those two days, and just being on the street and being in front of the club? I mean, uh, there were thousands of people congregating. Well, yeah, Thursday when, you know, Thursday when the news, when the news broke, uh, the, 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 I don't know if it was the club or the city or both, you know, blocked off the entire block out front between Hennepin and First Avenue North on 7th Street. And there's tens of thousands of people out all all night, you know, celebrating and mu music playing and people singing. You know, there was a house band and people were getting up and singing, you know, Prince songs. And uh, all, everything was purple. You know, Friday when I woke up, everything was purple. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> went to Glam Doll Donuts. All the donuts were purple. You know, it's the Walgreens every, was purple. The Walgreens <laughs> was purple. Everything was, you know. So it was, it was amazing. You know, and, and, and nonstop news. You know, TV and radio, and uh, you know, it's just it was a, you know, it's a lot. It's always a lot to consider when yeah. a local legend or an international legend yes. such as Prince passes, and you know, and then you know, sort of negotiating the club that day and the sound check and the hordes of. You know, foreign reporters. Yeah, I yeah. Do, who are you? Who are you? and you know, just trying to keep my head down and do my work. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you guys did do a Prince cover that night. We did. Um, yeah, it was funny. We did uh, when you were mine, and uh, I'm not the best at remembering all the words to songs. Fortunately, our tour manager knew the words, and it was funny because the Suicide Commandos, who you played right before we right before we came on. Uh, supported us on those shows. They and also a young band called Fury Things. And it turns out, you know, we were sort of trying to hush hush the whole thing. We didn't rehearse it. We were going to sneak it in the middle of one of my songs, which is the same tempo and key. And then we got a note: uh, Commandos are working on that. Oh. We're like, oh no. <laughs> so, but all's well that ends well. Both bands got together on stage and and played it together. So that was. Uh, that worked out really yeah, well. Yeah, must have been. I think it took people a while to recognize it, because you know it didn't have that, you know, that lilt. Yeah, that, <laughs> that the original bounce. version had. Probably had some heavy guitars. It's a little more pummeling, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a sweet moment. Uh, Bob Mold and band live on the afternoon show here, KEXP, playing tonight at uh, at Showbox. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, 
those uh, memories or that uh, moment. Of course. Um, the new album, absolutely fantastic, Patch the Sky, and uh, want to play a couple more songs? Yeah, we're going to play uh, one, one, one more off the record, and then we'll play an old one, and then maybe we'll do something a little extra at the end. But Great. This one's off the album. It's called You Say You. <laughs>
Bob Mould live on the afternoon show, KEXP, the song The Descent from Silver Age, right before that, You Say You from Patch the Sky, playing tonight at uh, Showbox at the uh, market tomorrow night in Portland at the Wonder Ballroom. Can you tune and talk at the same time? That's fun stuff. <laughs> I'm tuning. Check, check in with Jason. <laughs> Jason. So, uh, so I noticed uh, this week there's a string of West Coast tours or uh, shows. Uh, Portland tomorrow night, then down in L.A., back up to San Francisco, and then uh, and then what? And then we go home. We go home for a little while. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> we go home and then uh, get a little break, and then I'm sure there'll be more stuff. Yeah, so yeah. summer is, summer's going to be quiet, and then hopefully some more stuff in the fall and winter, and hopefully some stuff in the spring as well. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, the response has been great. To, you know, the shows have been wonderful. The crowds have been amazing. It's a lot of, you know, not only, you know, First Ave and Showbox and Wonder, but, you know, got Metro in Chicago, Paradise in Boston, 930 Club in D.C., you know, Webster in New York. I mean, these are places that all of us have seen so many shows and grown up playing these stages. So it's, you know, it's been really, uh, been really a great trip. And, um, you know, thanks to everybody that's come out to see the shows. And, you know, as long as, as, long as the duct tape holds, we'll, we'll keep touring. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, I guess we're going to close it out with, uh, if that solo wasn't enough for all y'all, <laughs> um, we'll uh, play one with a guitar solo in it. It's uh, Black Confetti. <laughs> Yeah.
like confetti. Yeah. Bob Mould live on the afternoon show. That song on uh, Patch of the Sky. Uh, Bob Mould playing tonight at Showbox at the Market, the Wonder Ballroom tomorrow night down on the West Coast. And uh, man, thank you so much again. And congrats on the new album. Thank you, Kevin. And congratulations on the new, uh, the new live room and the new facility and the same great music as always. Thank you. Thank you. Keep the albums coming. If you need, uh, need any black duct tape, we'll lend you as much as you need. Black duct tape is wonderful. <laughs> um, huge thanks to uh, uh, Jim, Justin, Alia, Scott, Matthew, Kevin, uh, Matt, O, Nancy, Milton, everybody helping out behind the scenes, all the donors that make this possible, and, uh, and John, Jason, Bob, thank you so much. Bob Mould, live on the afternoon show. It's KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.